Can we turn these lights off? We can get better here if we can just turn the lights off. Or, yeah, that would be good. Nothing compacted with nothing, with enough force as to make nothing violently explode. These two would be nice. Stage lights. Stage lights. Nothing became hydrogen shooting out from the center, parts of which suddenly stopped and started whirling in a circle. The whirling hydrogen pushed itself together until it formed a star big enough to exert a gravitational pull. One of these stars whirled so fast as to throw off a piece of material that became our Earth. Then suddenly, about one billion years ago, in an atmosphere void of oxygen and a sea bombarded by a hundred thousand times the amount of ultraviolet radiation seen today, a complex self-replicating cell assembled itself and eventually became Einstein. <laughs> the likelihood of the spontaneous formation of life from inanimate matter is one to a number of 40,000 digits after it. It is big enough to bury Darwin and the whole theory of evolution. There was no primeval suit, neither on this planet nor on any other, and at the beginnings of life were not random, they must therefore have been the product of purposeful intelligence. This was written by Sir Fred Hoyle, knighted in 1972. He's an astronomer and a mathematician. My uncle had the opportunity to hear him lecture once uh, to a very distinguished audience. He has expired now. He was the proponent of the steady state theory, which the Big Bang replaced his theory. But the point is, this brilliant professor said that mathematically, evolution can't work. And it's absolutely true. The evolutionist says, but given enough time. The point is, there are books written on, you can have more time than there has ever existed. And it still, theoretically, mathematically, cannot work. Creation or evolution, the issue is not the existence of God, rather it's the nature of God. And the real question is, did God make man or did man make God? Charles Darwin was educated as a Cambridge theologian. And in 1831, he was an unpaid naturalist on the HMS Beagle. For five years, he went out and about to research and look at the world about him. Now, he had a mission and he had a purpose. His father, Robert, his grandfather, Erasmus, were both very wealthy physicians. They helped support this mission and purpose. His mission was to prove or to show that supernatural causation is unscientific. So supernatural causation, unscientific. His real purpose was to un-God the universe. Now, Darwin's two major suppositions, his two major premises, number one, that we evolved from, we evolved from just the atoms themselves, and species upon species, as they change, turn into new species, and we have the diversification we see today. That was number one. Number two, he said the engine of this movement, of this change, is natural selection. Those were his two major points. Now, he supplied very little science to back that. His genius, his absolute, absolute genius, was that he, he gave, he gave or, or, or um, supplied a uh, materialistic theology for what looked, for what looked like scientific evidence. He, he took a philosophy and turned it into what looked like support from the field of science. But there was no field of science supporting this. Do you know who the most angry people were that uh, read his book, November 24, 1859? It was not the theologians. It was the geologists. 
They said there's no such thing as a, as a geologic column. That we see no evidence of species change. As we move up the different layers and down, there is no change. We see no intermediates, nothing. And to this day, they have never found the missing leaks. That's plural. They have never found an intermediate form of between two species as they're changing into something. The search for a legitimate reason to use certain races as inferior was putting gargantuan pressure on society and science to come up with an answer as to why. It was the hot topic of the day, and there was a reason for that. The economy of the United States and many other countries, Europe included, many other countries, the economy was flourishing because of slavery. The perpetuation of the race of Aborigines is not to be desired. That they are an inferior race of human beings it is vain to deny. The probable extinction of the race from natural causes is a proof of this. And it is no more desirable that any inferior race should be perpetuated than that the transmission of a hereditary disease should be encouraged. This was written by the Geelong advisor in Australia, May 2, 1846. There, I could put up a thousand of these things. They really believed that the Aborigines were inferior. They were somehow lower humans. And this belief about all kinds of peoples and nations was throughout the entire globe. I want you to see something that you probably have not noticed, but you have. Charles Darwin's book, on the origin of species by means of natural selection or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. Do you know that was his full title of the book? Does it leave absolutely any doubt in your mind? This or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. 1859, November 24, what happened after that? Civil War, and a fight between the North and the South in slavery, and the, the fight in the South was supported and fueled by this book. With savages, the weakened body or mind are soon eliminated, and those that survive commonly exhibit a vigorous state of health. We civilized men, on the other hand, do our utmost to check the process of elimination. We build asylums for the imbecile, the maimed, and the sick. We institute poor laws, and our medical men exert their utmost skill to save the life of everyone to the last moment. Thus, the weak members of civilized societies propagate their kind. No one who has attended to the breeding of domestic animals will doubt that this will be highly injurious to the race of man, excepting in the case of man himself. Hardly anyone is so ignorant as to allow his worst animals to breed. Who wrote this? Charles Darwin, The Descent of Man. The book's right here. At some future period, not very distant, measured by centuries, the civilized races will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. The break between man and his nearest allies will then be wider, for it will intervene between man and a more civilized state, as we may hope, even then the Caucasian and some ape as low as a baboon instead of as now between the Negro or Australian and the gorilla. That was written, you can't read that down here, but it's written by Charles Darwin, and that again is the descent of man. There are, I mean, this is the evolutionist Bible. I have 66 books that I can look at for my worldview. They have these books. One gentleman named Hitler studied and read this and believed in a superior race and felt that it was his duty, his calling, to exterminate all other races. The imbecile, you see, the poor people, those in sick houses, those in, in sanitariums were all killed and destroyed. The gypsies were all killed and destroyed. And then he turns his attention to the Jews. You see, and all of this was perpetrated by the fact that Hitler was a strong evolutionist. 